Beneath the surface of our common sense world lies another world, where magical things really do happen, where the impossible can be made real, and where time can perform the most incredible tricks. That place is inside the atom. For years, scientists had assumed that in our universe, there was nothing smaller than an atom. The very word atom, in fact, comes from the Greek word for indivisible. Then in 1897, an Englishman named J.J. Thompson made an astounding discovery that inside the atom, there were even smaller particles called electrons. Thompson's discovery opened the door to the amazing world inside the atom, a world where everything, including time, behaves in a truly alien fashion. Physicist Ian Walmsley has been studying this microscopic world for almost 30 years. When we get inside the atom to this world of subatomic particles, the ideas that we have about the way the world works completely have to change. We can't think in the same sorts of common sense terms that we think of in everyday experience. In fact, this subatomic universe is so strange that time becomes chaotic. A startling discovery that emerged from the study of light. Light consists of individual particles called photons, known for their wave-like properties. Waves have a very interesting sort of phenomenon. It's called interference. When two waves come together, they can add together and reinforce one another, or they can cancel one another out. And this interference is a ubiquitous property of all waves, not just water waves, but also light waves. But in the early 1900s, scientists noticed something very odd about these light waves, something that proves that time isn't always ordered. In this reworking of a classic experiment, once described as the most beautiful in physics, single photons, or particles of light, are fired down a darkened tube towards a camera, one at a time. So we have here a very simple apparatus. It consists of a light bulb at this end and a camera at the other end that can register the light. And in between, the light encounters a pair of slits etched onto this piece of glass through which the photons can pass on their way from the source to the camera. The purpose of the experiment is to study the behavior of photons as they travel from one end of the tube to the other. To begin with, the individual photons are sent through just one of the slits. Each of these dots arriving represents a single photon. So most of them are coming along this point. Some of them lie above or below that point, but the distribution is nice and smooth. Now the second slit is opened up and the experiment repeated. Each single photon must still pass through one of the two slits. So the results should still be the same. Classical logic would say that what we would get when we open both slits is just the sum of these two detection patterns. But what we actually find is this, an interference pattern, something that should be impossible. What that implies is that the single photon is somehow going through both slits at the same time. It's not making a choice as to go through one or the other, but is going through both simultaneously. In other words, each photon exists not just in two places, but also in two times. So we have this very strange notion that this single photon can be in two different places at once. It could be delocalized. But we can think also of a single photon being in, in two different times. 
So both space and time have become delocalized and fragmented.